Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And yes, we have the one and only Taylor from Life Goal Investments on vacation. Hence the white <laughs> shirt, since the black shirt. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having us. This is this is a nice little welcome break. Beach podcast, whatever we call this, back to beach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, just two friends talking, trying to help people out. Hey, That's it. Something we talked about at the end of video number one I want to talk about today is kind of a Super Bowl level economic number. And obviously, it's the inflation reading CPI on Wednesday. I think the market is set up for something in the eights, uh, at least on the headline number. Uh, but I have yeah. some concerns. Um, let's just talk about how do you think Wall Street's set up? Because I really have some concerns. And I think the retail trader might get caught, uh, get caught in something. What do, you, uh, what do you think about CPI on Wednesday? Yeah, yeah, you. I, I got to give you credit. Like I said, you've been stubbornly, stubbornly right on this. It's just taken much longer than I've thought for these kind of rollover commodity numbers, rollover uh, numbers start to bleed back through the system. It, it just hasn't kind of come through and seen lower inflation as quickly as I had anticipated. But the market really is set up now for this inflation print to be We've already peaked and we're coming down. And so there was a, a Fed, a New York Fed survey that was just put out this morning that we discussed real briefly here that stated the fact that the consumer, which the consumer usually doesn't, isn't very good at forward looking, no. but they usually see bad inflation numbers right now and they project them to be worse. But the consumer surprisingly actually sees inflation coming down. So mm. right now we're at 9 1. The consumer, Average consumer in the survey expects inflation to be all the way down at 6 2 hmm. over the next year. And then, more shocking to me than that is the fact that the consumer expects over the next three years for it to be down in the threes. I think it was 3 2 hmm. uh, for the average inflation. So, that shows a massive reversal in expectations from the consumer. Now, I think Wall Street, if you want to get you know, to that level, I think Wall Street has been expecting inflation to come down for probably the last two months, and, and, and they've been wrong. And admittedly, I've been in that camp as well. Mm -hmm. You've been rightly on the other side of this saying, those things need to come through the system, Taylor. You don't mm -hmm. realize commodity prices are coming down. That doesn't mean the food prices on your shelves are down yet. And that yeah. takes a little bit of time to bleed through. Yeah, so this I've had, I love calling numbers. It's you know when when you look at economic data for thirty years, you got to start just having fun, otherwise it's boring. So that's why I like to make calls or wild ass guesses, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and I've actually had a hard time with this number, and it was till this weekend because I I actually think there's lurking boogeyman in the numbers. So the, right now I think Wall Street is set up to have something on, with an eight on it, right? It was nine one last time. I think sure. that I think expectations are eight six. I want to, you know, I just want to put this out here. Let's just say it comes in at 81, 82, 83, something really good in Wall Street to ice. Peak, I mean, you're going to hear everybody scream, peak inflation, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. The Fed oh, yeah. is right. Fed oh, pivot. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be freaking bananas. But here's what, here's the problem. I actually think core goes up. Right. I think core last rating was yeah. five, nine. I think it goes six, one, six, two. So meaningful move up. I think rent and wages aren't done. I think gas and food, which is strips out of this. So it's really interesting. So again, headline comes down, core goes up. Wall Street celebrates the, uh, by the dippers come in like crazy. And then you have to step back and go the Fed. <laughs> the Fed has told us for 40 years, we care about core. Right. right. We've always right. bitched right. that headline is, you know, this number that the Fed doesn't look at. They've always looked at core. So, again, the Fed's going to look at the number on Wednesday if I'm right and go, oh, shoot, it's not coming down. While everybody's celebrating, it's coming down. This is going to like right. blow up my head. What do you think? Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't disagree. I think that the, the sticky components of it are the ones that are still there. So in core, I'm sorry, in headline in inflation, CPI, you have food and energy. In core, those two things are stripped out. So I think those are the ones that I've been arguing are rolling over in the headline number. Yes. That you see commodity prices like wheat, corn, falling sugar, off a cliff. Yes. Yeah. Soybean, all of them. All of them. Yep. yep. All of them that, that are the input input components for uh for food are, are rolling over. And obviously oil is rolling over in a massive way. So mm -hmm. I don't disagree with you. That's kind of the camp I've been in admittedly mm -hmm. for too long that inflation is going to roll over. But to your point, wages. The, the labor market's still tight. Like we just yeah. added half a million 
half a million employees in a month in the month of July, which is just crazy. Double the expectation. This is what, what is making my brain explode. Michael is the fact that GDP is coming down Yeah, and we're adding half a million employees in a month. That now, just It okay. has to be services, right? Cause I thought about that too, right? We're not making 85%. stuff. It had to be services, right? Yeah. 85% of it came from the service industry. There so that's, that's vastly where it is. Are those sticky jobs? Probably not as sticky as some of the other ones that you yeah, think about. Yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think that the, the point that maybe is underappreciated when we talk about all this wage growth, unemployment being so low, and I've mentioned this a couple of times before, we just, with this July print, surpassed the amount of people employed yeah. pre-COVID. We did. So we like, just, let, let's this, set yeah. the barometer you know, yeah. kind of where it is. Like, And unemployment went to 3.5. We I mean, it's now, I think the last time we were here was 1969. Think That's about a that for a minute. Labor market, right? Yeah, that is yeah. white hot. And, so, and at the same time, we're seeing shrinking GDP. It's like, yeah, it's a weird. It, it, there's no way to describe this. Like, if you, we we said this in a video the other day on Instagram. We were like, listen, if you're realistically going to someone and saying, hey, where is the market going to be in a year? And they give you a definitive answer, like they're morons. They're <laughs> yeah, just run away. Like, yeah. There are so no many idea. cross currents going on right now when it comes to the economic news that the fed and, and what people are doing overseas and what's going on between Russia and the oil that they are supplying or not supplying to the Eastern European yeah. nation. Like there is a lot. Going yeah. Natural on. gas. Yeah. So again, what I want to ask, what I'm really, what I'm really puzzled about is I think wall street can get what they want. Headline going down by the dippers can get what they want. Headline going down. Everybody's going to scream peak inflation and they're going to be wrong. Because yeah. I think core inflation goes up. It probably goes up several, you know, it goes up three tenths. That's I, a I problem. Don't, I, I don't disagree with you because the biggest components of that, to your point, are labor and they are housing, shelter. And those are continue to drift higher. Those are the really, really sticky ones. The ones, the other ones that we discussed are the ones that roll off. There's a here, reason the I Fed takes them out. <laughs> correct. 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 It's too noisy. They're too choppy. Yeah. The volatility is too high. So, so it could yeah. just be a, it, it, again, this is making my head explode. I do well, think listen, core goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, listen, I'll say this. Like we have been in the camp that, and I, I'm not trying to scare. This is not like a fear tactic. No. We have just been in this camp, you and I both for all of this year, essentially, since we started, started chatting in February, wherever it was, is that we're going into recession. Yeah. And so when we're going into recession, what you have is a bear market presenting itself. That's happened. Now you have a bounce but the recession isn't technically here yet or whatever we're calling where we are now. Mm. We think it probably gets worse. Yeah. And with that, this is called a bear market bounce. And so I mentioned this last week, bear market bounce in 2008 happened 23% off the bottom in 2000, 21% off the bottom. So like we're not in unprecedented times where things bounce and things start to feel good. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the, the dishwash, get, you know, the dish rag gets wrung out again. And then yeah. the bottom, so this this is really again this is this is I guess this is a fear I have. Headline comes down at Princeton eight three, the core goes up six one. Again, the market takes off. It's gonna rip. It'll go like three four five percent, and then sometime, somewhere maybe it's Thursday, maybe it's Friday, maybe it's the weekend. Some Fed president is gonna come out and say, you know what, folks, core went up. Are you not paying attention? <laughs> on that note, on on the New York Fed note today, two Fed governors came out and said, guys, like. We, we don't have this thing under control yet. It's not, they, yeah. they overtly said that. And the Fed also said at their last meeting, they're like, you want to know where we think they're going to go? Look at the dot plots. The dot plots is where the Fed projects where they're going to take in interest rates in the future. The dot plots say 100 basis points this year, 50 basis points next year. And they don't talk about the cuts that are to come that, that you know the market is projecting out in the future, but that's what they're saying. And so the Fed's saying, like, listen, this is where we think things are going to go. Yeah. And it, it, what's, what's interesting, too, is that you're really going to get those blow horns getting sounded if you do have a rollover inflation in tech. Because what happens is tech is the most interest rate sensitive stock sector there is. And so when you get uh, a rollover inflation and the Fed's not going to have to raise rates as quickly – Tech is the market sector that rips the most. And it's also yeah. the one that gets squawked about the most. This is this is why this hurts my head. Cause again, everybody's gonna scream peak inflation, inflation's rolling over, and it hasn't, if I'm right. Because again, yeah. core is gonna go up in my freaky example, but everybody's yeah. gonna scream it's going down. I mean, like, this is gonna hurt. 
Yeah, I wish that I wish you did this earlier because I tend to agree with you. I, I don't think that the wage stickiness is gone. I don't think that the shelter stickiness is gone. Again, the other components of headline inflation are what I think rolls over, and I think it rolls over pretty meaningfully. Yeah, so I, I think, think I think the it headline could. Yeah. Number starts to precipitate down relatively quickly. But to your point, those underlying kind of the, uh, the Fed more... the Fed is going to say the Fed's going to come out hard, and it's going to be it's going to rip Wednesday because all the idiots are going to come out and say it's it's over. And then there'll be like James Bullard is going to come on and go, we should do a surprise rate increase in you know August if some something it's it's going to rip the other way because again the <laughs> Fed's off. concerned about core and if core goes up we don't have peak inflation this this is why it's gonna I'm just afraid oh, for Wednesday no. there's gonna be a lot of people to get hurt. Still there, Taylor? 